$1.1 billion. $1 billion of that is also going to tribal colleges, minority serving institutions, as well as some vocational schools as well. So long story short, if you have a customer in your Rolodex that is K through 12, and, and yeah, I'm old enough to be able to say Rolodex folks, so just, just so everybody knows. Uh, if, you, if you have somebody in your Rolodex that is K through 12, higher education or vocational schools, you really want to reach out to them as soon as possible. They are the ones that are going to, to, to have funding available for them. So, and then another 3 billion went to governors uh, for emergency education relief. So why? are all these schools looking for distance learning? Well, there's a couple of main reasons. First and foremost is safety, right? We still don't know a lot about this overall disease. And because of that, we don't know exactly how it's going to react with students, with teachers, with faculty, with, with, with you know, other people that are employed inside the schools, and then what's gonna happen when the kids come home. So distance learning is something that people feel can be done safely and hopefully easily. The other part, and let's not fool ourselves, the other part is about revenue, right? Private colleges today receive over 90% of their funding come from tuition. Private nonprofit colleges, 31%, and public colleges, 24% of their revenues come from tuition. So a large part of their, their actual revenue comes from having students attending class in some way or form for the colleges. K through 12, it's even more difficult, right? K through 12, they have to have a student in class. Once again, I have six kids. Two of those kids did online, online school before COVID-19 hit. And one thing that I learned very quickly with online um, uh, schooling for K through 12, was even on online, they had to make sure the student was online and participating in at least one activity a day for them to get paid on that student's attendance. Remember, public K through 12 and all K through 12 charter schools as well, they get paid based on student attendance. If those students are not in class or not actively participating online, they don't get funding for it. And, and in all honesty, as we're going through this pandemic, all options have to be on the table. Schools have to look for any way possible to make sure that our kids are getting the, the training, the, uh, the education that they need to continue to compete against the rest of the world and continue to grow. And I will say this first and foremost, is distance learning equal to being in a classroom? No, no, it never will. I've been in video for 17 years. I've, I, I, I've sold video conferencing back in the ISDN days of video conferencing. And video conferencing has always been a great way to supplement the face-to-face -face interactions, but it's never been meant to completely replace the face-to-face -face interactions. So will this be just like going to school? No, it won't. But it will supplement the schools until we get a handle on this much better. So what are we seeing in the marketplace, right? Aver is a manufacturer. Really what we're seeing is starting March 27th, when Congress finally passed the CARES Act and set aside funding for schools, was when we started to get phone calls. Now, shockingly, the people that were calling us weren't K through 12. The people that were calling us were colleges. Colleges were the first to jump in and get involved in distance learning. Because if you recall, when March 27 happened, schools had just pretty much gone to a distance learning at home and trying a hodgepodge mix of how do I teach kids in a, in a, a moment's notice of how to do schooling from home. So K through 12 was already scrambling to figure it out and deal with the immediate, um, the immediate um, um, issues that they were having. Colleges, when they saw this, they said, we need to prepare for fall. 
And I don't know if you recall, May 12th, California, CSU, California State Educate, or the California State University System announced they will only be doing distance learning for the fall. So Cal State was the first domino to drop. Once Cal State system said we are doing distance learning for our, all of our universities in the fall, we started to see everybody else in the college and higher education move to that, right, at some form or another. I believe even Harvard today says they are going to only allow freshman students on campus. That's it. Everybody else will be distance learning. In early June, was when we finally started to hear from the K through 12s. And I will say it was about the second week in June. We started to hear from them of going, uh-oh, we got a problem. This isn't going to get taken care of very quickly. This isn't going to get resolved very quickly. And that was when we started to see the floodgates open and us starting to get requests on a regular basis for K through 12 and how our video conferencing solutions and video conferencing solutions in general could help them in distance learning. So really what I want you, when you take a look at these two, and I'm gonna go into more detail on them here in a couple more slides, K through 12 and higher education are two completely different animals. Yes, they both handle education, but their revenue models and their revenue streams are two completely different entities, right? K through 12 today, they are looking for simplified, cost-effective solutions. They are looking for more of the combined solutions. And what that means is, I want a sound bar that has a video camera in it because it's simple to install, it's simple to set up. Or I want a camera and speakerphone combo because they are easy to set up and they are much more cost effective, right? So they are looking for more cost effective solutions because they don't have the same revenue stream. Even with $13.5 billion to all the schools, they're not gonna have enough to do what they need to do. So when you look at this, when you think K through 12, you really wanna think cost effective, simple. That's what we're, they're going to be looking for. Colleges, and maybe saying that they're, they're, they're spending more for the right system for their classroom isn't the proper way of saying it. But really what they're looking for is the way to provide the best experience for their students, right? Let's be honest. To go to any Division I school, you are spending a fortune. And I'm sure if there's people on this call today that have gone through our, our universities and our educational system, they might still be paying for, for that, that, uh, that, that, that schooling. So colleges have the funding to put in more high-end systems. And when I say more high-end systems, I mean better quality cameras, in some cases tracking cameras, wireless lapel mics, multiple camera systems, multiple audio systems, right? So what they wanna do is they're going, hey, I got this classroom. I wanna make sure that I make it as possible to the real life experience that my students will get from being in the classroom. That's what I wanna be able to do. So their spend is much higher and their spend is much more in the direction of what's going to be the best fit for my room and the best look and audio quality for my students to hear and participate in. So once again, two completely different beasts when you look at it, right? So let's talk the high end first, right? A typical college setup, and I say this to everybody, a typical installation, a typical install, whether it's for a college classroom, a K through 12 classroom, a boardroom, a huddle room, an office environment uh, setup, they are always going to have five different components. And, and I'm not gonna show you all the five components here, but I'll, I'll talk through them. The five components that you'll have in every any type of, of video setup is gonna be one, you're gonna have some type of monitor. 
you're going to have a monitor there for people to be able to see the other side and make sure that they're participating. Two, you're gonna need some sort of camera source to pick up your presenter. You're going to need three, you're going to need some type of audio source, microphone speakers to pick up the presenter and to be able to hear the foreign participants. Four, you're going to need some type of controller. How am I controlling the camera? How am I starting my call? How am I going to handle this video call? How am I gonna jump back and forth between mute and unmute? You're gonna to have to have some type of controller. And five, you're going to need to have some sort of processing power. Am I gonna run this off a laptop? Am I gonna run this off an Intel Nook? Am I gonna run this off a PC? Is this gonna be run off a Mac, right? What am I going to run my application off of and what is everything going to plug into? So those hey, Charlie, five. Are, Charlie, yeah. um, we are only seeing typical college setup. You just went through five steps. Did you? Oh, no, I, I, nope, I actually said that. I said I'm not showing the five right now. I just wanted to kind of talk through them okay. for a second. Oh, they were just so, asking. Thank you. Yep, yep. They were just they were, they were just me talking. So sorry, I'm used to doing video so people can see me with my hand up. <laughs> I apologize. Um, but those are the five that you see in any type of system. So it's once again, it's the monitor, it's the camera, it's the audio, which is speaker and microphone, it's the controller, and then it's the processing power. So most classroom, most schools today, they have a monitor available to them. They have a processor available to them. Really what they need is a controller, which in most cases will be the remote control that they get with the system, or it'll be the laptop they use um, or the PC that they use will have the controller built inside of it. So really what else are they looking for? Well, for a college setup, they're typically going to look for a high-end camera. And really today, they are looking for more of the larger, more robust cameras that you see on the marketplace. And in some cases, they wanna make sure that those cameras can actually be flipped upside down and inverted so they can put them on the ceiling and it can pick up the presenter rather than having the camera low work and get hit or, or have people get in front of it. They also at times are looking for cameras and there are, there are cameras out there today that can actually do presenter tracking. So the camera will pick up a single person and only a single person and it will follow that person as they walk around the room. Most cameras are set up to where you have presets. I walk in, I'm at the front of the room, that's preset one. I go to a chalkboard on the side of the room, that's preset two, the camera goes over there. I go to the other side of the room, that's uh, um, uh, preset three, I push pre preset three, the camera follows me there, right? Say, they, they both have their ways of doing it, is price versus what they really need and what's available to them. So colleges are willing to spend more money on higher end systems for the cameras. On the audio piece of the puzzle, they are looking for more high end, more robust, more personalized audio solutions. So a couple that I show here are wireless microphones. And I, I will tell you, I love wireless microphones in the classroom. Um, the first one that you see pop up there where you see the two microphones, I love that setup because it gives the presenter the ability to have a microphone so they can walk around with on their lapel. And it gives them a second microphone that they can hand to anybody who might be in the classroom also participating to answer questions or ask a question and everybody can hear on the other side. So it's a great way to make sure that you're getting everybody involved as much as possible. Second microphone that you'll see on the top, that's more of just a lapel microphone. Right, that's a, a, a microphone that will just plug onto a shirt and as the professor, as he or she walks around the room, it'll pick up their audio and they're able to communicate all over, right? So everybody that's on the other side can hear them. Why is wireless lapel mic so important for a classroom setting, especially in a professor setting? Because 90% of the content that you're trying to pick up from that classroom comes from the presenter. What you don't want to have is a wide area microphone pickup to where simple tapping on the tables, gum chewing, chatting off to the side by, by students, 
will be picked up on the other side. That's why lapel mics and wireless microphones are so popular with, with colleges because it allows them to control the audio that is being heard from the other side. And we've all been on those calls. We've all been on the calls where we're talking and one person on the other side is talking and that's the person we wanna li listen to. But then you got two knuckleheads in the corner of that room that are chatting away and you're like, I don't wanna hear you guys, but you, you, I hear you and you're annoying my call. Please stop. That's what can happen in the classroom. Colleges are much more aware of that and they're working to correct that. Another cool product that recently came out and that I love is that bottom uh, speaker microphone setup to where it is a really a mic array that's designed to pick up audio in just a small square footage if you need to, but project audio to a large room. Once again, great for those presenters, great for the people that are communicating, great for the the professor that wants to talk in a certain area, but wants everybody to be able to hear the questions on the other side. So once again, college setup, you can see they look for a lot more options and cost is not as big of an issue for them. They just want the right solution for their, cl their, their classroom. Now let's talk a little bit about the K through 12. K through 12 is a little bit different. And, and Stacy, do me a favor, if there's any questions that pop up, feel free to jump on and ask me for them just because I always see my presentation right now. So if, if there's any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer through the call. Um, or I can answer at the end, either way it works. So K through 12, as I said earlier, oh, I'm sorry? Okay, we haven't had any uh, uh, calls, questions pop okay, up so, yet, but. No problem, we're good. no problem. I love it when I'm doing such a perfect presentation that I get no questions, I love that. I, I know I'm doing a great job. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so typical K through 12. Once again, are they going to need all five components that I talked about? Yes, they're going to need a monitor. They're going to need a camera. They're going to need an audio speaker and mic. They're going to need um, a controller and they're going to need a processor. Two of those three, two of, the, two of the five or three of the five are typically already taken care of. It's how do I get the audio? How do I get the video? With K through 12, we see them go more with bundled products. And bundled products are bundled because they're designed to be more cost effective for people. They're also going with systems that are easy to install. And I will say this from the get go, they are using equipment in ways that I've never, been, that I've never seen before or that I never thought of before, but it's meeting their immediate need. So they're not always thinking long-term, they're thinking much more short term and what can I get, what can I do, what can I get to set up these, right? So you'll see two different types of products on there. You're gonna see typical room cameras, which are the first the, the, the first two that you see in the, in the bottom third one. Those are typical room cameras that come with a speaker phone. And what they are doing for the most part with these are taking the camera, flipping it upside down, mounting it in the back of the classroom in the ceiling, and then running cabling to those speaker phones. Now those speaker phones are either being in some cases being mounted in the ceiling so they're off the floor, or in some cases when they can't do that, they're put on the teacher's desk, right? Which is very near them. So as they communicate, as they talk, their video's being picked up, their audio's being picked up. Is this as good of a, a, a setup as the colleges? No. The microphones that you see here are broadband open microphones. They have a wide range pickup, typically about 15 to 20 feet. So if there are students in that classroom, if there are other people in that classroom, they will be heard on the other side. The reason they're picking these solutions is simply because of the inexpensive of it, right? The cost of it. The cameras that I showed you before will run anywhere from $1,000 to $6,000. A couple even more than that for the colleges right? The microphones that I showed you, those will run anywhere from $1,500 for the colleges to some cases $10,000. The camera and speakerphone combos that you see here average about $1,000 to $1,500 combined. So you see the price point is much lower for the K-12s through than it is a higher education. 
they don't care so much about the overall experience as they do about the simplicity of the install and the overall cost of the actual system. Now you'll notice something that shocked me very early, early on here is we had a lot of requests for sound bars, right? Aver has a, a video conferencing sound bar that you see there, as does Logitech and Yamaha. And schools like the sound bar because it's an all-in-one system. So all they need to do is take a laptop, plug it into that, that, that sound bar, and then plug the sound bar into a monitor, and they got everything they need. They're ready to go. Now, is the quality and the experience exactly what you'd want? No, but it's simple to install. And in some of these schools where they're looking to install 500, 600, or 1,000 units, sometimes that takes precedent over the actual experience that people are going to have on the call, right? And they will set them up in such a way to make sure that they can capture the teacher and make sure the teacher can be heard. Well, it might not be that perfect experience like we see from colleges. So once again, Colleges, K through 12, are they trying to get the same thing done? Yes, they're both trying to do distance learning. They just have different budgets and different ideas about how to get this done. Now, once again, in saying that, I've also seen K through 12 spend tons of money on, on high-end cameras, right? It's some, some charter schools, some private schools, they've reached out and they have spent as much as colleges, if not more. So I'm not saying that's out of the, the realm of possibility. But I'm saying it's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, you're going to see the K through 12 go for these types of products rather than more of the higher end products. So I hope that helps. I hope that explains a, a good majority of it on what's going on and what's happening there. Um, really, my last slide that I wanted to talk about, and then I'm more than happy to open it up for questions, is I get this a lot. And, and I don't just get it from resellers and distribution partners. I get it from my manufacturing plant in my headquarters, right? When is this rush going to end? Because we're seeing it across the globe right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. As of Friday, 12 states were talking about moving their K through the start of their K through 12 year till September. Right? So we're already hearing schools saying, hey, we are going to have to push back. We are going to have to wait till after Labor Day before we start the school year. So number one, this is not gonna end in August at all. There's no stretch of the imagination that says this will end in August. We've all seen this and political affiliations or ideas aside, many states have seen large spikes over the last couple of weeks. I live in California and we just got closed down for the second time. Um, I'm very happy my wife can cut hair Otherwise, I would have really long, shaggy hair right now. So I, I really appreciate her for that and many other things. But California is closed down for a second time. We're seeing other states preparing to do that as well. So that is also going to affect the preparedness of K through 12 in colleges. And, and I think something that something that especially those partners out there that have been involved with K through 12 and, and education and colleges and have been reaching out to us have seen, there's a lack of overall stock of cameras, especially of microphones right now. I've had discussions with about four or five of my dis different distribution partners, and I have a great relationship with a lot of our, our manufacturers that we work with out there. And everybody's saying the same thing. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody in the manufacturing world had stock ready and available for something of this. And because of that, you're going to see the demand for the product last for several months to come because there's just not enough stock available of the components. And, and when I say components, it's not just the video, it's not just the, uh, the audio, it's cabling, it's processing power. All those five components outside, outside of the monitors, monitors are easy to find right now. How do I get the audio? How do I get the video? How do I get the cabling and extenders that I need? And then the processing power. That's going to delay a lot of this as well. Hey, Charlie. Yep. 
so I think that you've kind of addressed this question, but we did have a question on any supply chain issues. Obviously, <laughs> schools are going to want to have this stuff in place before it starts. So can you maybe, he's specifically referencing uh, cameras and USB capture devices. Can you maybe give a little more detail about each one of those? So I will say this, right? And, and, and I'll talk about AVER for a moment. AVER right now for our highest, for our products that are highest in demand, we're averaging about 30 to 45 day ship time from the day that we receive the PO. That's what we're averaging right now. Other manufacturers out there that I've talked to are averaging eight weeks. That's in video world. In audio world, microphones, good luck. Uh, that's what part that scares me the most about this. I have talked to some of our partners in, in the, the microphone world that are telling me that they don't know that they're going to have enough product or components to meet up with demand at least for the next two to three months. So are there supply chain issues? Yes, there are definitely supply chain issues. And every customer I talk to, every end user that I talk to, I tell them the exact same thing. It's not just gonna be on one of the components, it's gonna be on multiple pieces of the component. So let your customers know, Aver, we're averaging about 30 to 45 days right now. And we have actually doubled our manufacturing capacity to make sure by middle of August, we can meet all of the demand that we're looking for. I'm not hearing the same thing from other people, so I can't speak for them. But that's okay. what I'm seeing in the marketplace today. Now, in, in saying that, the other issue that we're running into, and I've had this now for about four deals that I've run into, when you get orders, and, 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 let, and I'll say this, right? Before COVID-19, a large order for Aver was, 50 units, 75 units at a time, 100 units at a time, right? I get a large company that reach out and go, hey, Charlie, we're gonna do deploy 400 units over the year, over the year, and they buy 50 to 75 at a time. That was typical for us, that was average for us. We were completely fine with that. In one day, I received POs for 3,000 units from four customers. Right. And when I got on the phone with, with the, the resellers to talk about it, they all needed the product the next day because they needed to have installation done in the next 30 days. <laughs> right. So not only are we seeing a lack of audio components, video components, cabling components, processing power, installation is going to be a key component in this that there's not going to be enough manpower for. And I will tell us to everybody on this call right now, if you work for an installer, if your company has installation services, start marketing it out to schools right now because they're going to need you. You might not sell the components, but man, you can definitely sell the installation right now because installation is at an extremely high demand. I had one school order 700 units from us and they needed them installed in under 30 days, right? If you just do the math on that, you're trying to install, what, 15 different classrooms in a day? Probably more than that, my math is pretty bad right now. About 20, about 25, about 25 units a day. 25 classrooms, you're gonna go in, set up power, set up cabling, set up the camera, set up the audio, set up the monitor, test it, try it out, get it up and running. 25 of those in a day. The typical installer would do three. So you can see it's not just gonna be the lack of components, manpower is going to play a huge factor in this. And that's why I tell everybody, my prognosis on this is that higher education and K-12 business will continue into Q4 because of the lack of current supply and the lack of, of K through 12, especially not reaching out soon enough to prepare for it. Once again, colleges were the first ones to jump out on this. Colleges were well ahead of this. Colleges were reaching out to us back in March. We were not hearing from schools until end of May. Big time frame difference. 
big time frame difference. And that's why they're so far behind right now. And that's why when I look at this and I talk to a lot of schools, they know that they're going to be going into fall, not with everything they need and still on a building their platform basis. I will say this, I live in, in Menifee, California. And I know probably nobody on this call knows where that's at, but we're a part of Riverside County. Our schools have told us we are going to implement two different types of programs. We're going to implement online classes and a hybrid where kids are in school two days a week and the rest of the time they're online. And they have already told us it, the, the first half of the year is going to be a work in progress for online. They just know it. And I, I feel we're going to hear more schools say the exact same thing. So don't think this is going to be a boom or bust for you if you don't see a large percentage of your sales in July and August that they're all going to go away. They're not. This is going to be through Q4. My projection really is probably up until the Thanksgiving break is when we're going to see a lot of the business start to take place because it's just there's not enough of everything out there for it right now. Hey, Charlie, we have one question, maybe a clarification a bit. Um, they asked, are the schools now using the screens and mics to distance themselves from students that are returning to the schools? Ooh, good question. You know what? And I, I stopped sharing for, uh, for a second. So it's a great question. Here's what I'm seeing in colleges. Colleges are using a, some of their students are going to be in the classroom. And they're also going to be doing distance learning from that classroom. So there might be, and once again, when you think of a college campus, their classrooms are much bigger than a traditional K through 12 classroom, right? They can fit 40, 50, 60 people in those classrooms easily. So they're talking about maybe having one fifth of that classroom full, or they're going to have students that are not as highly susceptible to COVID-19 in the classroom. They still got to do distance learning, right? One of the issues, and I think, and I apologize if I got the right wrong, the one incorrect. I want to believe it's Title IX that, that says that if a student has a disease or an issue as well as, as gender, um, if they have a disease or an issue that keeps them out of the classroom, they still have to be able to be taught as if they were in the classroom. And we're seeing a lot of the funding go to that as well. So some of those colleges are doing a hybrid where some students are in the classroom and some students are outside of that same classroom watching it as if they're there. So colleges, yes, we are definitely seeing that. K through 12, I'm not hearing that same thing. K through 12, that teacher will be either teaching online only or in a classroom setting. That's what I'm hearing today. Now, I would say this, folks, this is all a moving target, right? This is all a moving target right now. I have also heard some people tell me that their school district is talking about having one group of kids in the classroom for two days, and then they go home and they're watching that same classroom the other two days when another set of students are in there, right? So I wish I had a direct answer that says yes or no. Everybody's doing this a little bit differently because nobody's ever done anything like this before. Does that help? I know that was a long-winded answer for a maybe, I guess. I think you got it, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> okay, no problem. No problem. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, really, like I said, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you all have. Really, my, my biggest, the biggest takeaway that I want, want you all to get from this is right now, as value-added resellers, you have a huge opportunity to go out there and really sit down with your school's and your colleges and the vocational schools out there and get a better understanding of exactly what they need. And in doing so, trust that you can go to your, your, your partners at Herman Pro, who then can reach out to us if needed, and we will put you on the right track for what's going to be best for those schools. Our goal ultimately is to try and make sure that the schools have exactly what they need for whatever type of implementation they want to do. Whether it be a hybrid, whether it be online only, 
whether it be two days on, three days off, whatever it may be, we are happy to work with you and give you the best ideas, even if they're not Aver. I, I will tell you this, there's lots of times that I recommend, uh, I, I love I love Yamaha, I, I love Revo Labs, but now they're Yamaha. Um, but there are a lot of great microphone companies out there like Revo Labs, Yamaha, Sure Microphones, Clear One, that we work with all the time. Uh, Stam, Nariva, there, there's a wide range of them. So if we don't have it, I promise you, we will put you in the right direction of what is best to be used. So hopefully that helps you. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? I can open this up, um, but it gets a little noisy. So if anybody just wants to type in a question or maybe raise your hand, um, that would be wonderful. In the meantime, I will just remind you that uh, Herman does distribute Aver, and we have these um, products available for ordering. And I've put up um, a sales map for some of you who maybe um, are not acquainted with your salesperson. There is their contact information available to you. They can work with um, putting you in contact with the right people at Aver to design something as well as get your orders placed. So um, feel free to reach out to them. I, Charlie, I'm not seeing any other questions. So unless you have anything else you want to add, I think that will do it for today. Great, no, I just wanna say thank you again to everybody that, that attended. Hopefully you were able to get some, some worthwhile information to, to help you and understand this a little bit more. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. We always are here to help you and support you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. We appreciate it. And if you have any uh, questions about the content, it will be um, available on our Herman Pro AV website under webinars tomorrow if you want to re-listen to it. And some people have asked um, to receive the uh, presentation, and I can certainly send those out to anyone who is interested. So thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon at another webinar.